Jackson, and now it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the program the legend himself, Mr. David Frizzella. David, can you hear me all right? I can, and it's nice talking to you, buddy. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. I really appreciate you uh, coming here on the radio program. Oh, it's my it's my pleasure, and it's always a good thing when you got a piece of product like we have out there right now, and I, and I appreciate you playing it. Sure, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in uh, just a minute. It's a great CD, but uh, I was wondering if... You could tell us a little bit about your music career, I guess. Uh. Boy, I, you know, um, of course, uh, I started back uh, with the great Lefty Frizzell, my older brother, and uh, he gave me he gave me a you know taught me I got gave me a guitar and said here here's a key of D you know. <laughs> and, and how old were you? Uh. Uh, I was real young then. I was about eleven or twelve, and he. When he did that, and then, but I actually uh, went on his show. I, I started being a part of his show when I was about 16, 15, 16. Uh, I had started playing with him during the summer times at school and stuff, you know. The school would let out. I'd start working with him in the summers uh, back, oh gosh, when I was about 14, 15. And then when I was 16, I joined his show for the next four years. And uh, so I was with him quite a while. I, he's, he's one that got me started and got me wanting to play and sing and write songs. I, I guess he, uh, well, I guess you could probably say that he was your earliest musical influence, probably. Well, there's no doubt. And then later on, uh, back in the, you know, I met Johnny Cash and, and uh, people like that uh, from those early shows with Lefty. Yeah. And uh, so Johnny Cash ended up being one of my big heroes as well. And, um, of course, and then... Uh, a fellow by the name of Ray Charles is is the way he'd sing. Uh, I loved all those country songs he did at one time, and and so he became a big influence to to my to my uh, style of, of, of playing and singing. And I was wondering, do you think you could tell us a little bit about uh, y- your legendary brother Lefty Frizzell and his music career? Well, you know, he started out as first number one record back in 1950. And then he went on to having double-sided hits. Uh, in those days, they were sending out and, and mailing out to radio stations uh, 45s, and there was a song on each side. And so he would end, he ended up having double-sided hits. And uh, he had, uh, uh, you know, he had ended up having uh, four songs in the top ten Billboard charts at the same time. He was just an amazing man and, and was uh, very right for his time. We all learned from him, uh, Merle Haggard, myself, and just about everybody that sings a song uh, came came from Lefty, you know. And and uh, but he was he was one of the greats. And uh, him and Hank Williams ruled country music at that time. They had, matter of fact, between Lefty and Hank Williams, they had seven of the top ten songs at the same time. Wow, I, I think my grandfather, who's listening out there, has just about every one of Lefty's uh, seventy-eight <laughs> records. Huh? In well, you know, I do too, and bless his heart, that, that's two of us. I, I'm just a huge fan of him, other than being his brother as well, you know. But um, he taught me everything, and I know I know a lot of other people that learn learn how to do what they do from him. And uh, I guess now, you, you said you first uh, toured with him, first went on the road with Lefty, and uh, uh-huh. wasn't that under the title of uh, Little David, the rock Little and roll? Little David, the rock and roll sensation of the nation, that's right, I... I was doing uh, rock and roll against up against his country music, but but you know it seemed to fit back in the rockabilly. You know when Elvis was first out, and and back in those days, Elvis was just just beating the charts up around the world, and and um, uh, um, uh, also uh, you know a lot of the, a lot of the rhythm and blues artists like Little Richard, uh, Fats Domino, and uh, and folks like Ray Charles were just getting their starts and stuff, and. But yeah, I was I was doing that rock and roll stuff. Buddy Holly was doing a lot of stuff in those days, and I wanted to sing and sound just like them, and so I basically did. And but working with Lefty gave me a chance to do to, to do that. And now, in, it wasn't it in '59 that Lefty uh, helped you get your first recording contract? He but... sure did. And uh, I was with uh, I was with him. We came to Nashville, and it was just at the same time when Buddy Holly was in that plane crash, and. Uh, that was the same time when I went on back to Nashville and left here. And it was just one of those things where, where we was in a, in a house staying out here in Nashville. We was living in California at the time. And we came out to Nashville here. Left here getting ready to record another session. But we were in a house, and, and uh, some people came out. A guy came out that was working for, for Gene Autry's uh, Western Melodies Publishing Company. And Lefty had some songs he wanted to publish. So when the guy got there... 
Lefty was getting ready to go record, and his voice was kind of kind of bad, and he didn't want to hurt it, so he asked me to sing the songs for him. So there was a couple of songs he wanted me to sing for the publisher, so he so he could get uh, get these songs published, and I sang them for him. And the guy got so excited about David Frizzell at that point, he introduced me. He went after that. He went and called uh, Don Law of Columbia Records, and Don saw me the next day and signed me to Columbia Records. And that was uh, Lefty's label, too. Wasn't that was it? Lefty's label at the same, at, as well, exactly. It's, so that's kind of the way I got started, just kind of a, one of those things. I was just in the right spot at the right time, and, and uh, I've always kind of believed in that, to always kind of keep yourself ready, because you never know when somebody's going to hand you a guitar and say, here, show me what you can do. And, uh, and if that happens, you certainly need to be ready. And so what was it like to record those first uh, records? Boy, it was just amazing. Of course, in those days, we just did four songs at a time. You know, three to four songs. We did one session, like, and a session is three hours long. And in those days, you re- you recorded the vocals right along with the with the with the with the uh, the musicians. So, and the background at the same time, I walked into that studio, and the Jordanaires had just finished an Elvis Presley uh, session and came over to do mine. And so I had the Jordanaires, the whole band, and myself, and everybody in there, and we recorded them all at the same time. There was no overdubs or anything in that time, in, in those years. Amazing. Now, of course, we can lay one track at a time and record it at our leisure, you know. And uh, you ended up spending, uh, wasn't it really the rest of the 60s touring with Lefty and then I, time I sure in the did. Air Force? I sure did. I, I, t- I toured with him uh, from about 56, I was with him, started with him day and night. I was with him for the next four years, which was 1960. And then I, they were getting ready to bring to, to take me into the Army. And I didn't necessarily want to go into the Army, so I joined the Air Force. And uh, so I was at the Air Force for the next four years. And then uh, after the Air Force, you re-signed with Columbia. I did. I went back and re-signed with Columbia Records, and I joined Buck Owens. I was with the Buck Owens All-American Show. And uh, then I started recording uh, after Columbia. I signed back with them. Didn't have any luck. But I went with Buck Owens, and he got me on Capitol Records with him. And so I really didn't have any real big luck with them. Uh, not until me and Shelley West got together uh, did I have uh, the kind of luck that I was looking for. And uh, you, was it you that went out? Well, you were already out west. They, came, Shelley West and your brother uh, Alan came out to join you. They sure did. They came out here from Nashville, and uh, and I uh, I had them. They stayed up there at my place, and I, I started taking them on tour with me, and I and I started uh, doing all kinds of things with them, and uh, and then her and I I got I put together a thing uh, with. Uh, with uh, Warner Brothers, we put a thing through with Warner Brothers for her and I to record for Warner Brothers, and it it worked. And and the rest of that is country music history. You know, we we did everything from that. So, so y- you recorded. You're the reason God made Oklahoma. But was that before you were signed to Warner Brothers? That actually, it sure was. Uh, we did the whole album. We had a record label. It was called Casablanca West, and Casablanca Records at that time. Uh, had disco going. They had the Village People and Donna Summers and those kind of folks. Oh, okay. And they wanted a West, a country division. So, so they signed Frizzell and West, and so we did the whole album. But by the time we got the album finished and got it back over to them, the CEO of that company had had been removed or retired or whatever. And the new guy coming in didn't want nothing to do with com- with country music. So, so we got ousted, and uh, it didn't. Not until um, Clint Eastwood. Heard our song, uh, You're the Reason God Made Oklahoma, did we have another shot at it? And so he took us over to Warner Brothers, and uh, and uh, we ended up getting a deal there. 